one of them big boy tracks. Big body. As a youth in the book, I was big body. Class, you know. I'm still up. I kill it. Uh, Every line. Uh, they feel it. Uh, Instead of trying to count up on my winnings. Yeah. Or just know I'm one of the real. Crystal Light, good morning. It's hump day. And Christoph. Good morning, Didi. Good morning, Sandra. August. Is that? Oh, August Joe. Good morning, Erica. Good morning, Tangela. Good morning. Hey, mama, good morning. It's hump day. Good morning, Lisa. Harriet. Good morning. Good morning, Tanya Harden. It's going to be a great day. You know why you're going to put a demand on it? Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Deloria. Shell! <laughs> What's going on, Melinda? Good morning, Shane. My degree stay 90. Five ivory, greenery, blinding. All right. All right. It's hump day. Good morning. Good morning to everyone coming in. Good morning to all of CCM. Good morning to UCI. Everyone that's coming in right now, it's, it is hump day. I am still with you today. My wife is still resting. My beautiful wife, Jamila Gooden, is still resting. And we're so much right now just thanking God for everything that he is doing. And on uh, even on yesterday, there was such just a great report from people that the word of God is touching. And I'm so appreciative of you guys allowing me, allowing me uh, to be able to speak into your lives. It is it's not something that I take for granted. In fact, it's something that I take very serious. And so, uh, again, good morning to you all that are coming in right now. Uh, tonight, my wife will be speaking tonight on our UCI uh, broadcast tonight. She will be speaking tonight. The church doors are open for Bible study tonight. I want you to click. I want you to tag and share. Let people know that the Car Chronicles movement is on. CCM is on right now. And you that are in Charlotte, be at Bible study tonight. Let You want to be there tonight. Uh, anytime God allows my wife to just rest. Uh, he always speaks a monumental word and I don't have to tell you that because most of you know that good morning Trina Aurora good morning Chiquita good morning and so tonight Bible study is open tonight to everyone we want you to come in and fellowship tonight and and just allow yourself to begin to soak up the Word of God um, this morning uh, yesterday as my, my wife was still at a place where she, you know, is, is resting. I heard the Lord speak a word and he says, he says that I'm getting ready to turn it around. He says, I'm getting ready to turn it around. And, and, and as soon as I heard the word of the Lord, I began to hear uh, where he wanted to go. Uh, again, some of you that are still coming in, I want you to know that tonight, Tonight we are open. We have open house Bible studies. So make sure that you get there tonight. 
uh, if you are coming in from other, other, other states, maybe this is your first time coming on or other countries because we are, are international. So many uh, people that we're getting that come into CCM from other countries, make sure you put your flag up there. We definitely want to recognize you uh, and we salute you. Uh, we honor you and where you are. This morning, I want to read from the scripture, St. John, the 11th verse, 14th chapter through the 21st chapter, St. John, the 11th verse through the, uh, I'm sorry, 11th chapter. 14th verse to the 21st verse, seven scriptures, seven scriptures. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go on unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus unto, the, unto his fellow disciples let us also go that we may die with him then jesus came and he found that he had lain in the grave four days already now bethany was nigh in jerusalem about 15 furlongs off and many of the jews came to mary to martha and mary to comfort them concerning their brother and Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been there, my brother had not died. I, I just want to speak to you for a few minutes from the subject title. It's not over. I want to say to you on a hump day Wednesday in the middle of the week when some of you just caught hell yesterday, some of you just caught hell uh, uh, Tuesday, uh, I mean uh, Monday, Sunday, when you some of you are dealing with some situations right now where it seems like that it is over. I want to tell you by faith that it is not over. One thing about it, and, and this is what I love I love when a judgment has been passed and then God, God turns it around. I love it when a judgment and most times when the Lord speaks that he is getting ready to turn something around, it's because a pronouncement of death has happened over the subject. It, 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 it happens in most time when a judgment has been released and it looks like that there is no way in the world that God can turn it around. Those are the times when God does the most, when it seems as if death has called a finish to the situation, whether that situation is business, whether that situation is relationship, whether that situation, whether that situation is something that seems terminal, even terminal illness. God has turned around people and God, listen, God has healed people from cancer. God has healed people that were on their deathbed and the next thing you know, they were up. You had the witness from last Sunday when our cousin was here, when the, the, the pronouncement of death was over him and we saw God turning around. And I want to say to somebody's spirit that will believe that it is going to turn around. And today I'm telling you, it's not over. It's not over. It looks like it's over. Death, it because the, the, the presence of death, it looks like it's final. It looks like that nothing can be done to turn my son around. Nothing can be done to turn my, my, my daughter around. Nothing can be done because there are some people, and this is a real world we deal with, where we're still dealing with fathers that have drug addiction, that have alcohol addiction. And I want somebody to know that God and your situation have been bad. It's been bad. In fact, it seems like it's gotten worse because it looks like the death of it, it looks like it's final. You can't get them to listen. It looks like it's final, but the pronouncement of death is not a finality with God. 
God is the only one, especially Christ. God is the only one that have took in terminal situations where everybody around them have said that surely this is death. This is it. Just like in the text, when, when people misconstrue because their faith is not there, when they look at it and they say, there's no way that, that she can come back from this. There's no way that he can come back from this. And then we see God do a miracle. Too many times God has turned stuff around and I want somebody to know on this hump day today that it is not over. That's right. Fix yourself up. Get yourself right. Get yourself into position. Don't lay there. Don't lay there like, like you, finna, you have accepted what has happened. No, you have not accepted what has happened. The word of the Lord comes to tell us that today it's not over. And today there is a turnaround. There is a turn around. Death is not the finality. And I need you, I need you to click, I need you to tag, I need you to share. Especially put somebody's name down there that you know they're dealing with a terminal situation right now. It seems that they're dealing with a terminal situation with their son or their daughter or their relative. They're dealing with a terminal situation, whether it is sickness unto death or whether it is life that seems to be swallowing them up and taking them to the path. It's not over. The first thing I want to deal with this is one thing I begin to think about is as parents, as brothers, as sisters, as husbands, as wives, is, is that we pray for people. We, we, we see what people are going through and then we begin to pray for them and, and we pray for them and we fast for them and we lift them up. But this is the problem. We ain't always ready when the press start working. Because the process of prayer gets ugly before it reveals itself for what it's really going to do in a person's life. The process of prayer. Uh, Y'all better, you better get this. So, Laura Renee. It's not over because now your prayers are now working. But this is the thing, the thing about prayer working. Prayer gets, your prayer brings the situation to a terminal place. Glory to God. Prayer brings it to a terminal place where it seems like that it's getting ready to die. But prayer brings it to a terminal pr a place to prepare it for the process for it to live. But this is the thing. We forget what we pray. When it seems like death has hit the situation, Keisha, it seems like we forget what we pray. We pray for this to happen in this person's life. The unfortunate is... The process of prayer takes it to a terminal place because of anything, nothing can change. The Bible says it like this, that except a seed go down into a ground, into the ground and die, it cannot live. Hear that. It talks about faith. It says, except a wheat of corn goes down into the ground and dies the process or the, the living or the resurrection of the situation cannot happen. I got to tell you this morning that a part of your prayer working is that it has to seem like death has brought a finality to the situation. But the process of prayer is what's getting ready to turn the situation around and make a declaration uh, uh, that it is not over. Glory to God this morning. On this hump day, watch this. You know what the enemy wants you to do? He wants you to focus on your feelings. That's what he wants you to do.
He wants you to focus on your feelings because if he can get you to focus on your feelings and your emotions, then your faith will be annulled. The enemy wants you to focus on your feelings and your emotions because if he can get you to focus on your feelings and your emotions, your feelings, Faith will be annulled. Except a, corn, a wheat of corn go into a ground and die, it shall not bring life. In other words, your faith is what's getting ready to prosper the situation, even though it looks like death. They look like they're gonna, it looks like they ain't gonna never accept you. It looks like that they, they'll never uh, uh, love you again. It looks like it's the end of it, but the devil is a liar. Today, I want you to know that it may look like death, baby, but it is the turnaround. It may look like death, but it is not over. It is not the finality. You can't believe what you're feeling. No, you cannot believe what you're feeling. God, because your feelings are giving you something from the flesh. But it is the it is the spirit that you have to tap into now and you got to come out of your feelings and you got to stop focusing on your emotions so that your faith will do what it's supposed to do. Are you supposed to be happy about the situation uh, seeming terminal? Are you supposed to be happy? Uh, uh, I can't tell you that you're supposed to be happy, but what I will say is that you have to allow faith faith now to work and remember the process of prayer because the process of prayer is the stages of growth to bring them to the situation or to bring them to a place of resurrection. Yeah, the situation, your faith is getting ready to turn things around. It may look like you're getting ready to lose your home, but you're not. It may look like you're getting ready to lose your vehicle, but you're not. No, you're not. It looks like you're getting ready to lose a family member. No, you're not. You, it's, getting, it's looking like that something is getting ready to happen in your marriage. No, you're not. What God is going to do, he's bringing that thing to a terminal place so he can give it new life. Your situation need new life. You don't need a continuation of the same thing. This is the thing. We want things to live, but you don't need a continuation of the same thing. You need something different to happen. You need something else to happen that will bring faith, bring your faith to a point of getting things where it's supposed to be with those persons, with that business. Yeah, uh, 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 Jaquita said the best is yet to come. This is when you really got to believe that and it just can't be a song. Death is not the finality. Remember the process of your prayers. You said, God, Lord, I need you to do this. Lord, I need you to do this. I need you to touch my, I need you to touch my son. I need you to touch my daughter. I need you to touch my mother. I, I need you to touch my situation. And, and soon as he touches it, and, and soon as he touches it and allows death to come to the situation, some of you crying right now, but I need you to cry with faith. Uh, uh, as soon as he touches the situation and it seems like death has taken it and it seems like it's over, you stop believing in the process of prayer. And I want you to know today, baby, that your prayers are working. I want you to know your prayers are working. I want you to know that things are turning around for your good. Glory to God. And so in this text, I, 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 process, I process things. I process things. And in, in, in this text, we've seen the character. We see the character of Martha. 
And the first thing I begin to ask myself, are you Mary or are you Martha? Are you Mary or are you Martha? Because now probably about five years ago, I would have equated myself to the Mary in the text, right? I would have, I would have. I would have equated myself as far as my faith, right? As far as my faith, as far as where I am, I would have equated myself to the Mary in the text. But I begin to look at the, the, the dichotomy of Mary and Martha, the differences between the two. And I went back to the further situation where Mary and Martha, when Jesus comes to their house and, 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 and Martha invites Jesus in, sits him down. <laughs> I'm getting ready to get you. Invites Jesus in, sits him down. And, and the sister Mary goes and sits down and listens to the word. <laughs> I need you to put in that text. I wouldn't need you to put in the caption right there. Are you Mary or are you Martha? Because when we get finished with this, you got to have a truth in this situation to why you feel like God ain't going to turn this thing around. So, so. In, in our first situation, uh, uh, Martha is upset with Mary because Mary is sitting down and listening and enjoying the presence of Jesus. <laughs> now, when I first read that, I'm like, of course. What, I mean, what you talking about? It's Jesus. What the man? Look, she chose the good part. You know we get churchy like that. You know she chose the good part. But the more I begin to look at the complexity of Mary, the complexity of Martha, Martha seemed to be more human to me. Because who going to invite somebody in their house and not serve them? Who goes somebody, invite somebody in their house and make sure that they ain't got everything they need? When you invite somebody in your house, you're going to run. And then I took it a little further because I said, I said, Martha is very complex. I saw myself. I saw myself because years I invited people into the house of God. And, and watch this, I ministered them and served them, but there were too many times that I was left out the presence of God. There was too many times I was serving folk like Martha, but I was left out of the equation, I'm talking to you, uh, that I was left out of the equation so I didn't enjoy the presence because I was too busy, busy serving in the presence. I'm going to say that again for some of the folk that may not have gotten that because you probably think that you're Martha in this, the Mary in the situation. You probably saying that I'm the one that's enjoying, but baby, you got to admit you've been the one that's been serving. You've been the one that's been working. You've been the one, like I said on yesterday, been the mule that's been wearing yourself out and you really have not enjoyed the presence and because you had enjoyed the enjoyed his presence you because you hadn't enjoyed his presence and you got to be honest because you had not enjoyed his presence you had not walked in his power and you had not experienced him like you need to experience him i started looking at the complexity of martha Martha said, Jesus, I mean, why is it that she in here and she enjoying this? And I'm like, yeah, uh, man, why Martha worried about it? And to be honest, I, I, I think that in most cases, a lot of us are more Martha than Mary. Because we, we are used to serving. This is the thing about the complexity of Martha. Martha was still a great believer. And when we look at her, we see her as carnal. 
She's not carnal. She's human. And I want you to know that you're human. I want you to know that you have been Martha a long time and now it's time to see the Martha in you so that God can come in the situation and turn this thing all the way around. There is a U-turn you got to make back the other way because there's something that has to happen in your faith because God is saying to somebody today that it absolutely is not over. There's a dichotomy when it comes to Martha. Martha in the situation, Jesus is ministering, Mary sitting down, Martha running around the living room. She's running back and forth to the kitchen. She's making sure everybody's feet is clean. She's making sure that everybody, that sound like anybody yet? Uh, you don't make, it, she got the, she's making sure that they got wine for the communion. She's making sure that the bread is right. She running back and forth. She taking care of everything and looks like the situation is dying and she don't feel like it's fair because how in the world can this be fair and, and things is dying? Yeah, I start looking at it. I'm like, man, if I had to look at the human side of things now, a uh, 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 hindsight view, I was more Martha than Mary. You know, we always want to be the superhero in the story, but I was more Martha than Mary. And, and what you got to admit right now so God can do what he can do is God, I may be more Martha than Mary. You see, this is the thing. Martha is, is still gifted. Martha still has faith. Martha was still walking with the disciples. Yeah, Martha was still experiencing there's a dichotomy with Martha and Mary because they were always together when every miracle happened. So Martha always witnessed the same thing Mary did. Martha just didn't process as fast as Mary. Lord have mercy. <laughs> The difference is that Martha just did not process. She believed just like she believed just like Mary did, but but she didn't process as fast. Somebody has to know this morning that it is not over. I need you to put on your best dress. Brother, I need you to put on your best suit. I need you to put on your best outfit. And when you go deal with the situation, I need you to know that it doesn't matter that they said that it's uh, that 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 the death is death is final and it doesn't matter that it seems that death is final. I need you to know today that God says I'm going to turn the situation around and it is absolutely not over. See some truth getting ready to happen. You know what the devil hates? He hates us to come to a truth about the person that we are in the mirror. Because as soon as we begin to see who we are in the mirror, then our release changes. The way that we speak changes. Because we're no longer so focused on our feelings and faith begins to work and it, it brings it brings a demand on us. It brings us to a reality. When I begin to say, man, I got more Martha than Mary, then I can see the truth of my course and I can go back and look at my prayers and now I can work my prayers because I know I was dealing with my situ I was dealing with my situations in my feelings. Look at the scripture. This is what he's saying about the situation. You want to know what God is saying about your deathless situation? You know, you want to know what he is saying about your deathless situation? Right here in 11 and 15, this is what he's saying about your deathless situation. He says, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. To the intent Ye may believe to the intent. In other words, he says, I'm so glad that I wasn't in a situation or 
I'm so I am I am sure glad that you didn't sense me in the situation to the intent that now I'm getting ready to do something to make you a believer like you have never been before. I'm getting ready to raise your faith to a whole new level because I'm going to turn this thing around. I'm, I'm telling you it's not over. I'm getting ready to show you it's not over. He says, I'm so glad I wasn't there to the intent that you may believe. I have to put this into place and I want to put this in perspective. Sometimes he'll let a situation happen. He'll let a judgment happen. He'll let a situation happen. Somebody went to jail last night. It seemed like it's, it seems like it's the end. It seems like it's over, but God always Always allows something to happen. He allows it to look like it's getting ready to die to the intent because he's getting ready to raise a new faith in you. He's getting ready to raise a new faith in the other person. He's getting ready to break something in the business. He's getting ready to do something unexpected. I was talking to a, I was talking to somebody about their about their home. And the home looked like it had gone into complete foreclosure. It, it looked like it, the, 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 the mortgage payments were overdue. It looked like it was done. And, and all of a sudden, uh, the, the, the person had, had put everything up. It's over. We out of here. And, 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 and they put the death notice on the situation. Catch this. They put the death notice on the situation. And guess what happened? The letter comes and says that this is a program for this. And now we're going to take and we're going to work everything back out. And we're going to work everything back out. We're going to bring you back up current and we're going to put you back in place. Did you catch that? She put a death notice on it. Can I ask you a question this morning in your situation? Have you put the death notice on it? Have you said that, that the situation is over? Have you said that my son will never live, my daughter will never live, my uncle, my brother, that they'll never live, that we'll never have, we'll never be in. Have you put the death notice on the situation? Because God hasn't. <laughs> It's just that the process that it has to go through now to touch and to bring life, it looks this way. God said, I didn't, I didn't pronounce death over it. So why you put it up for sale? This ain't the first time this happened. This ain't the first time I've seen it. Can I, can I show you how God works? Let me show you how, let me show you how God works. And this ain't during the time of the pandemic, of the pandemic. I had this couple in the church and they, they had fallen behind in their mortgage, right? And they decided to move out the house. Now, this, the, 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 the couple, one of the, the lady was, she was, I don't, I can't, I don't have another way to say it. She was very uppity. And, and so she was one of the types that she didn't want anybody to know that her home was in foreclosure. Right. So she didn't want anybody to know her business any kind of way. So she decided that she would jump ahead of God and give up her home. So she moved out of the house. Right. They were out of the house. They had moved into a condo. They were gone for over a year and found out out that the people had never foreclosed on their home and that they still own their home and that God had not allowed it to close. In fact, they could have moved right back in it, but she had told so many people and she had, she had declared to so many people that she had given up her house to move in a condo till she settled for a lie to cover a truth. Again, have you pronounced death over a situation? God in here. So yeah, 
The house was still right there waiting on them. They had moved out of it and the whole time they still owned it. It was still theirs. And uh, yeah, so the house was still theirs. The, 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 nothing had happened. God had not allowed nothing to touch. It looked as if the situation is over. But God says to you, on this hump day, <laughs> it's not over. I, I'm almost finished bothering with you. Got to ask you a question though, because now you, we looking at it. That I, I, I have, I'm not. I've come to the surmise for myself that I have been in my walk more Martha than Mary. That's right. And so now I'm looking at the text, and I'm looking at I'm looking at Martha. Here she go again. Here, here she go again. The believer. <laughs> Martha is the believer. Here we go again. The 20th verse, 19th verse. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. You know what? I, a bunch of y'all got churchy right then. <laughs> a but stand still and see the salvation of God. I, I, I listen. I heard it from state to state, na nation to nation. I heard you. you. You just need to stand still and see the. Let me tell you something. When your emotions take you over, when your feelings take you over, when your humanity take you over. When, when you're crying and, and you feel broken and you feel like things is over, you don't have no standstill in your spirit. You have to muster up a standstill. Now, most of us, when we heard, when I, when I just read that, but Mary was still in the house, we automatically said to ourselves, stand still and see the salvation of God. That, that, that worked real good. That worked real good when you ain't feeling nothing. But when you feeling something about your about, about what's going on around you, when you feeling something about your family, when you feeling something about your husband, about your wife, when you feeling something about your situation, when you feeling something about uh, uh, your business, when you feeling like you getting ready to lose something that's very valuable, you don't have no you don't have no standstill in your spirit. Stop playing. What you have in your spirit is, Lord, Lord, be with me. Lord, work this out on my behalf. Lord, Lord, help me. That's what you have in your spirit. I told you, you got to come to a reality first for God to really deal with you. He can't turn it around until you tell the truth about what you really feel. And so Martha in the text then said, Martha unto Jesus, Lord. Because now Jesus came. Here we go. And then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask God, <laughs> whatsoever you will ask God, God will give it. Boy, if that don't sound like me. I'm going to use me because y'all ain't going to tell the truth this morning. If you want to tell the truth this morning, give me some of them thumbs up over here. If you want to tell the truth about now that, you know what? I, I think I sound a little bit more like Martha. Now that I think about it, I, yeah, yeah, I think I sound more like Martha. Y'all y'all ain't going to tell the truth. Uh, uh, come on, let me see them thumbs up. Come on, you got to tell the truth. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. <laughs> Lord, if you would have been here, but even now, God, I know you can work this out. Now, she's saying she knows God can work it out, but in the heart of hearts, she done called death to the situation and kind of, she's celebrating with the other people. She done already, you know, she's, she's mourning with the mourners. She respects Jesus. Watch this. I need you to catch it. She still knows that Jesus is Christ and that he is Lord. She respects him and believes that he is Lord. She just having a problem believing what he can do right now. Ooh. She respects. 
I'm just saying, sound like me a little bit. I'm just saying, she respects Jesus. She knows who he is. She knows, Rufus, that he is a miracle worker. She knows that he can do anything but fail, according to the song. <laughs> but she don't believe he can do it for her. Isn't it funny that we can believe for everybody else but not believe for ourselves? Isn't it funny that we can have gargantuan, juggernaut faith, bowler, bowler ball, knocking down building faith that God will change someone else's situation? But when it comes to our own, I'm just saying, I believe that we have a lot of Martha that we don't admit to because Martha in the situation sounds a lot more because Martha is saying you God and you can do anything. And I know that he going to come back when he going to come back in the resurrection. <laughs> and, and Jesus saying, no, just like the lady, that's like that I was just telling you about. And, and just like I was telling you about the couple, you know what? We gonna go ahead on and move out of our house and we gonna move into a condo. Because I know God can do anything and I know he gonna set this thing up for me. Can I tell you something? I'm gonna tell you what she didn't admit. She didn't admit that she wanted her home. She didn't, she didn't admit that she really didn't wanna go stay in an apartment she, she didn't admit because it was a more apartment than condo. She didn't admit it, but to make herself look big, she went and had a home gathering and you know, the new, the, and did all of this stuff to cover what she was true feeling, truly feeling. When had, she had told the truth that I want it, then God could have dealt with the truth of the matter better. I'm almost finished. This is what you got to ask yourself because the reason why I showed you this in this because this uh, showed you Martha in this text like this because you got to ask yourself how much is God to you? Is he a God that can just do it for other people? Or is he a God that can really turn your situation around? Is he a God that when he says it's not over, you can really believe it for you. Is he a God? Because this is where, this is where it's at. Martha believed that he was more God for everyone else. But when it came to the place of believing how much God, can I tell, I want to say this without saying the name because I just seen something go up the timeline. God is not finished with your husband yet. He is still doing some work on him and in him. But you have to let the work be done and not get in your emotions and let yourself become terminally depressed about the situation. When you allow yourself to get depressed about it, then watch this. Now the spirit got got to attend more to you and the other situation because now when you were a helper through prayer and faith now you're not a helper and now he's working on your husband by himself when you can be in the equation by faith saying God thank you for what you have already done and doing in my husband's life no, it is not over. I know I'm hearing right. You're thinking you're to, you're to start dreaming about divorce and dreaming about y'all splitting up. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Anytime a big transition get ready to happen inside a relationship, that's how the enemy come. 
and ain't nothing getting ready to happen, baby. Don't you, those dreams, when you have those dreams, you get up and you go ahead on and rebuke them. Some things the enemy sins. I know what I heard this morning. I know just what I saw. Yo, listen, let God do what he has to do. Let him turn around the situation and you stop turning it around. You can't turn it around by beating him across the head. I'm sorry, that ain't going to work. I'm asking you again, Martha, how big is God in you? I'm almost finished. I need you to get, I need you to catch this. Now, almost my last point. This is what we don't like to do. You ready? Sure. This is what you don't like to do. Take your hands off the situation so that God can lay his hands on it. Take your hands off the situation so God can lay his hands on it. They was busy wrapping him. They was busy wrapping up Lazarus, getting into the tomb where they, the tomb where he had where they had purchased for their family plot. They was busy with the mourning and all the situation and forgot who God was in the situation. And some of you, you are so busy right now with your hands on the situation that God can't put his lay his hands on it. And I say, you put your hands on it. God lays hands on it. And what you got to do now is first admit that God, you know what I'm getting ready to do? I'm getting ready to take my hands off. I'm getting ready to take my hands off. Do you remember the first time you was riding a bicycle? You know, well, maybe not the first time, but you had been riding for a while and you, you had gotten known how to ride it. And you came to a point where you was able to take your hands off the off the off the wheel, you know, take your hands off the handlebars. And you would just roll that thing and 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 you know, you, you became good at riding and you became good at riding a bicycle to the point where your hands was off of it and you riding a block with your hands off, just your hands down. Cool. You knew you wasn't gonna crash though. Because you knew that you were still in control even though it looked like you were out of control. Can I tell you in this situation, you got to kind of think about it like you're riding a bike, but you're taking your hands off the handlebar, but you already know that there's no possibility that you finna crash because you got this. I want to tell you that you got this, but you got to take your hands off and you got to now allow the spirit to blow the wind of God over you. Huh? You got to allow God to do it. See, to, to, today... It's, it's agreement. Today, it is all about agreement. I'm coming into agreement with God. And agreement is the number two. I'm coming into agreement with God that this is my turnaround. I'm coming into agreement with God that it's not over. I'm coming into agreement with God. And I'm coming into agreement with God because now, Lord, I'm getting ready to take my hands off of the handlebar. I'm getting ready to take my hands off of my son, my daughter, my, my mother. I'm getting ready to take my hands off. I'm getting ready to take my hands off because I've realized that this is not a burden that I can carry. I realize that my back is not big enough. Neither is my leg strong enough to carry it. So, Lord, I'm taking my hands off of the situation and I promise God that I'm not going to put my hands back on it. See, today, your seed of 27, it's your seed of 27 today because, God, I'm coming into full agreement, the number two, and I'm coming in and, and, and seven for, for the perfection. I'm coming to full agreement and perfection that you have this thing. You have it. You have it because I've been trying to do this on my own too long. You have it. This morning, it's the seed of 27. Agreement. The power of agreement. 
the power of agreement because I got to take my hands off this situation or I'm going to wreck the situation. Take your hands off so the Lord can put his hands on the situation. Y'all getting this? You got to get it. You, you have, I don't care how painful it is. And that's the reason why I dealt with Martha the way that I dealt with Martha, because I seen, I seen more Martha in me than Mary. Yes. And listen, having spoken into uh, uh, thousands of people, having spoken into thousands of, of people, we still sometimes, even in the way we walk and serve, we walk more like Martha than Mary. The Lord is getting ready to bring resurrection. Let me read this right here. This is, this is, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to let this one go. Glory to God. The 22nd verse. But I know, here's Mary. But I know that even now, whatsoever that will ask God, God will give it to thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. I'm talking to somebody and telling you that the marriage is going to rise again. I'm telling somebody, son, daughter, mother, uncle, friend, that it's going to rise again, but it's going to rise the right way. I'm telling somebody, this is what Martha said. Here, here we go. We got a lot of Martha in us. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Can I get you to get this in your spirit? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Did you catch that? He says, I am the resurrection and the life. There's another dichotomy. There's another difference. I am the resurrection and the life. I'm what's living. And I am in that. That looks like it's going to die. But I raise it. He says I'm in both places. He says I work both realms. He says I work both dimensions. He says I'm he says I'm stronger. There is no other dimension that's stronger than me. I am the resurrection and the life. The question this morning to you Martha is, will you let him be the resurrection and the life in your situation? When you plant your seed this morning, will you let him be the resurrection and the life? Will you let him be because this is the thing. Martha came to the place where she said, well, I know he going to rise again, but the place where she was saying it from. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, he says, he that believeth on me, he shall live or the situation is going to live. This is what he says. So, so today, I need you to come out of your feelings. I need you to stop focusing on your feelings. I need you to get back in your faith and I need you to be able to release it. Because something getting ready to happen. Something different is getting ready to happen. But let your process of prayer work. Father, we thank you right now for agreement we come total we come into total agreement total agreement right now that you are going to turn the situation around that you are getting ready to turn it around and do something extraordinary i come into agreement with you god that it's not over i come into agreement that the judgment can be turned around. I come into agreement that the business deal can be turned around. I come into agreement that I, I'm not getting ready to lose anything. I come into agreement with you, God. And I just ask you, when I begin to lose faith, strengthen me. Give me hind's leg that I may jump over, leap over walls. 
in Jesus' name. Today, today is simple seed of 27. Today, because today you coming out of your feelings, you coming into agreement with the spirit of God concerning your situation and you're going to lay your hand, you finna take your hands off so that the Lord can lay his hands on it. My wife will be with you guys tonight. I want you to tune into the Bible study tonight. Tune into the Bible study tonight. It's going to be, I, listen, there is an awesome word that is in her spirit right now. The Lord has allowed her to get rest for it. Remember, uh, Bible study is open. You guys come on in. Let's fellowship. Let's see. Let's watch God move tonight and today. When you plant your seed, when you release that seed today, I want you to say, God, I agree with you.